Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really good offense. I mean, across the board, you know, they got a lot of experience. And then the new guys they have are really good football players. Um, a lot of returning starters and or transfers. Uh, really good quarterback that can run the ball. Um, he can make all the throws. Uh, running back, they got one guy that will put his foot in the ground and try to run you over, and another guy that will bounce it all around. Uh, speed on the perimeter and an experienced offensive line. So it's going to be a, a very good very good test for the defense. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun game. Uh, I don't know, different than other guys in the country, but he's he's one of those, you know, one of those rare guys that can, you know, he can he can make every throw, and he's a, a threat running the football. And then not only that, but most of those guys that are a threat running the football, once they get flushed in the pocket, they want to take it down and run it. He's going to extend some plays and he's going to make throws downfield. And those receivers know how to work and get open um, when the play breaks down. So I think he does a really good job of keeping his eyes up field, extending the play, and he can also pull it down and run it if he needs to. Yeah, I mean, the decision process is always, you know, the head coach prerogative. Uh, whatever, you know, whatever he thinks the plan is that week, whatever gives us the best advantage to win. Uh, you know, obviously, however you, however you slice it up, you want to go in the locker room with the lead, right? All of us want to start a half of a football game up seven points or three points or ten points. Uh, but as far as what I like, I love it. Let's, let's put us out there first. Let's set the tone of this football game. Um, our guys know that the biggest series – of the game is either the, the first series of the first quarter or the first series of the third quarter whenever they put us out there. Um, but I, I really like it when I know the plan ahead of time and I can let the guys know if we win the toss, shirts are going out first and it gets those guys excited. And I, I know they like to play first. Um, so I'm all, I'm all for it anytime we want to we wanna put us out there right away. Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, those guys have gotten better each and every, you know, practice since we started. They've gotten better each and every week as we moved into game week. Uh, we're always happy for for anybody that gets an honor. Uh, big deal for Luke to get Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, and I think he understands and we understand that you don't get those accolades if the rest of the guys don't play well too. And it's going to be somebody else's turn uh, next time. So I think Luke played an unbelievable game. The rest of the guys played an unbelievable game to, to allow him to be the defensive player of the week. So I think it was a great, great team effort, and, and congratulations to Luke. Well, I think they're they're big, but they also uh, have pretty good movement skills. You know, you watch them, a lot of uh, insert plays, a lot of pull plays. Uh, you guys watch the film, a lot of counter. Uh, those guys can move around pretty good. They can go block in the perimeter for screens. So I think that they they have the unique uh, skill set where they're they're really big kids, but they can also move really well. And sometimes you don't see that. Sometimes you see a bunch of big guys that can pound you in the box, but they can't get out and move. Or guys that are really fast and they're pulling all over the place and running, but they're not as big. And I think you know they've they've done a good job of recruiting guys that can do both. What are the challenges of going up against the offensive line? Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it's just. You know, when the linebacker's eyes got to be right. And then when they add some motion going the other way and guys pulling back the other way, they're, they're trying to pull your eyes. And you, you just have to have – everybody in the team really has to have really good eye discipline. You know, that, that starts pre-snap, alignment, assignment, getting my eyes where they need to be, and then trusting that my, my key is going to take me to the football. And sometimes when there's just a lot of movement going on, you kind of go rodeo and you, you just kind of see ball, get ball can't do that with these guys. You got to trust your keys. You got to have great eye discipline. You got to know your issue within every call and you got to play the play the defense. Yeah, I think, you know, Adrian has the ability also to pull the ball and make a lot of things happen as we've seen through the first few games. Um, and he does that in practice. So I think that gives us a good look at a guy that can you know, manipulate the football pretty well. Some of those guys will show you if they're giving it or show you if they're keeping it. Adrian can manipulate the ball pretty well, and that gives us a really good look at, at things in practice. I was thinking about Joe Joe's made a bunch of plays this year and last year on misdirection. And there was that play a couple years ago for you, I think the walking touchdown right again. I mean, how much has he grown 
obviously as a football player, but just in trusting his eyes and being good at being disciplined in those situations. Yeah, I think I think he's, you know, he's grown in a lot of different ways. You know, his football IQ's up a lot from two years ago. Uh, he understands what we're trying to get done. He understands his alignment, his assignment, what he's supposed to look at, and then he trusts that if the ball's going away, I'm going to do my job because I might get a play coming back. And the next time when the ball's coming at me, somebody's going to do their job so I can make the play. So I think that he's, he's, he's grown a lot in, in learning the defense and trusting his job and trusting his teammates. Yeah, I mean, you know, more for him with RPO type stuff, you know, or, or if he's the edge blitzer, you know, he's being red. But it's more space game with him with RPOs and trying to rip one behind his head or, or you know, throwing one out quick and making him make a good play. Um, but, you know, the way that offense works anymore, especially the spread offense, everybody's getting red. You know, five techniques, three techniques, one techniques, inside backers, nickels, safeties even to throw the, the slant behind them. So uh, the modern football, everybody has to know – you know, what their issue is. You have to understand the sets where you might be in harm's way and you have to do your job. We talked a lot about JoJo's versatility and all the things you do. You showed a little bit of a three-corner look in the last couple of weeks. I'm curious, when you have a team that's going to do as many different things in Oklahoma, how valuable is a guy like JoJo where if you don't have the sub to walk him out over? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, when you can, uh, when you have a guy like him, and, you know, do you want to put him on the best receiver all the time? No. But when you, when you have a guy that can cover down on, you know, most receivers in the country and handle the tight ends and the running backs really well, you can do a lot of things. You can disguise looks. Um, you can make the package work without subbing in and out. You know, sometimes when you sub in a, an extra DB, you might get caught, you know, and they might get the third down and you might be playing first down with three DBs in the coverage and your run fits might not be great. Um, so he allows you to do a lot of different things in the defense and, and makes the package work. Do you like what you've gotten from Braxton so far? I mean, I know he hasn't played a ton, but he's played a little bit more. Weeks. Yeah, he's played a little bit more. Braxton had a good day at practice today, um, and he's coming along really well. Coach Fish has done a great job with him. Uh, but I think I like where he's heading, and he's got a, he's got a bright future. One more time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's uh, it's one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to go down. I've never, I've coached in many different stadiums across the country. I've never been um, there, so I'm excited. I'm really excited to play in this football game. Really excited for the atmosphere for our guys, uh, you know. And I think this this is a good rivalry that's been reignited. Uh, you know, you kind of you watch the games when you're young, and you hear about them, but you've never experienced it. So I'm really excited to experience this football game. I mean, a little bit of both, probably. It's a nameless, faceless opponent every week. And if you don't prepare like it is, then you get snuck up on. You get the trap game. You have to prepare like it's Oklahoma or like it's Ohio State or like we're playing for the national championship every single week. And that's what these guys do, and it's no different this week. Now, it's going to be exciting to get 11 o'clock kick where I don't know what other football games are on. There might be a lot of good games. There might not be as many, but I know there'll be a lot of people watching this football game, and I think it's going to be exciting for these these guys to go show that, you know, as a defensive unit, what they can do, and they belong, you know, and I, I'm, I'm excited to do it too because, you know, you always want to get yourself tested, and you want to get yourself battle ready for when you enter conference play, and this will do both. This is going to be a great test for our team. This is going to be a great, you know, game to sharpen the sharpen the sword a little bit and get us ready for conference play, and I'm really excited for these kids to go out and show the country that they can play with anybody and I don't care who they go up against you know Oklahoma's really really good they're they're a really good football team especially I haven't watched their defense much on offense I know they're an exceptional football team but I think that we have exceptional kids too and I'm excited for this game yeah we probably left a couple sacks out there but um, you know 
Kyle Van Trees, you know, going back to Buffalo, I can't remember the kid. You know, he took like he had like 11 pressures on him last year or something like that. He's really good at not getting hit. Tom Brady isn't the most mobile quarterback. Tom Brady don't get hit very much because he knows when to get the ball out. He knows how to direct the, the protection, and he's not going to allow that to happen. And I think Kyle Van Trees was really good at not letting himself get hit. Now, the, the good thing was we got a lot of pressure on the young man. A um, couple QB hits. I can't remember how many and, and some pressures to go along with that. So they did a good job there. Do I want more sacks? Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you have to evaluate the, the entire scope of the football game. Uh, I thought we could have got home a couple of times. Um, but they did a good job of putting pressure on that guy. What do I think about it? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's. <laughs> I think he's really good at moving around in the pocket. Uh, you know, a lot of their, a lot of their long pass plays. You know, things have broke down. Guys have been covered. He makes a, you know, a great play to get escape from the pocket. He extends the football play. He's got his eyes downfield and he hits a, an open receiver. That's that's practice plaster drill. They obviously practice a scramble drill quite a bit. Uh, so I think that he's really good at extending the play. And you know, he's he reminds me a little bit when we were at uh, Oregon. Vernon Adams did a really good job of that. He wasn't the guy that was going to pull it down and, and take it for 80, but he was the guy that was going to scramble, keep this play extended, always had his eyes downfield, and always making a play. You know, I think pregame a little bit, maybe. You know, try to tell these these kids too, and when I'm talking to the high school seniors. If you don't take a, a minute, at least, to, to look around, hear the sounds, smell the grass, that, that, that's going like that, and especially for these, our team. I get to do this, hopefully, for a long time. Uh, these guys, you never know. So they need to take a minute, just a minute, feel it, smell it, hear it, then lock it back in. And then hopefully we really enjoy it afterwards. You know what I mean? But all these games are important. All these games are big moments in these, these young guys' lives. And if they, if, they, if they don't take a minute to take it in, then they're missing something. And I don't want them to miss anything.